Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're gonna to be talking all about structured bindings in C++. This is specific to C++ 17. Structured bindings are a new feature that let us deal with multiple return values a little bit better. Now I did make a video about how to deal with multiple return values in C++. Check out that video if you haven't already. I'll have it linked up there. And this is kind of extending upon that with kind of a new way of how we can deal with this, specifically how we can deal with tuples and pairs and returning things like that, because structured bindings just let us kind of simplify our code, make it a lot cleaner than what it was in the past. In that video about how to deal with multiple return values in C++, I did specifically mention that I like structs and I like to return basically instances of structs which contain the members of data that I actually want. That's how I personally like dealing with multiple return values. That could have potentially changed with this introduction of structured bindings. And in fact, it has changed because over the past like year or two really in my own code, I've kind of noticed that I've been using tuples and like pairs and ties and like, I've been using that kind of stuff basically having multiple return values soaked into like a tuple. I've been using that a lot more often because structured bindings help me actually make my code still manageable because I used to absolutely hate what it was like before. In fact, let's take a look at what it was like before. So I'm gonna write a very simple example, just writing it from scratch here to make it really, really obvious. And what I'll do here is just write a function that creates a person. Now a person is a nice example because you might wanna store more details about a person than just for example, their name. In this case, we'll deal with their name and their age. So we'll write a function called create person. We'll need to set a return type, which we will set to SCD tuple. And this is gonna contain the actual kind of multiple return values that we want to deal with. In this case, we'll deal with a string for the name of the person and then an integer for their age. And we'll include string up here as well. And of course, we don't need to actually write age, just the type. So we have string and int. Over here, we'll simply return. In this case, we'll be nice and simple. We'll just simply return Cherno as the name and then an age, well, I'll just put my age, which is 24. So now we have basically a mechanism to return two different types of data, a string and an int, without having to like create a struct or anything like that, or just like pass parameters by reference or like as a pointer, nice and simple and clean. Of course, in this case, you could just use a pair because there are two variables that this actual data structure is holding. However, with the tuple, you can of course expand this to contain as basically as many values as you want. So the, in previous versions of C++, you had a few options for how you would deal with this. We'll write some code to kind of show that. So I'll write std tuple string and int you can see already the type is a little bit messy but we'll have our person here and we'll set that equal to create person now to simplify this a little bit more you can just use auto here in fact that's what i probably would do in this case but now we have the task of accessing the data and this is where it gets really really annoying so basically the way that you can't just do person dot you know name as if it was a struct you have to use std get and then as a template argument, the index of the data you wanna get. So zero, for example, would return the name, the first variable, which is a string. And then if I used one here, that would return the age. So basically to get this, and you put the, the actual variable as a parameter here. So to get the actual string, which is the name, I'd have to write code like this, or you can use auto, of course. And then the age as well would look a little bit cryptic and it would basically be the same with SCD get one. And this is a little bit, well, it's it's just not nice. I probably would never use a tuple for this case. Now there is something called STD tie, which is a little bit nicer than this. You still have to actually create two variables. So name and age over here. But what you can actually do is just pass them in here. They get passed in by a reference name and age and then just set this equal to create person and this is a little bit nicer than all of this of course we don't have our actual person variable because we don't there is no person right it's not like it's a struct it's not like it's its own type it is just a container a tuple in this case that holds what we want which is a string and an int so this does look a bit nicer and I would probably be a little bit more inclined to do it this way. However, it still takes up like three lines of code. It still does not look nice. And I still probably would use a struct and just basically create a person so that then I could return that and then obviously just access it by person.name and person.age as I showed in that C++ video about multiple return types. Now this is the part that you've been waiting for. This is where C++17 brings us a new feature called structured bindings that solves all of these problems and makes our code look really nice. Instead of doing all of this, I'll erase my person up here 
Instead of doing all of this, we still keep this as a tuple. We don't need STD tie or anything like that. All we need to do, and we can get rid of these two lines of code, all we need to do is use the word auto followed by the two names that we give to our variable. So we can give these any names we want whatsoever. So name and age would be good in this case. And then we just set it equal to create person. And that is it. This is a string. This is an int. It does everything for us perfectly. And if we wanted to, like we could print this, we could do anything we want with these variables because now they're totally just in this scope and totally accessible to us. Now, keep in mind, this feature is only in C++ 17 and newer versions of C++. So if this does not compile for you, make sure you're not compiling with C++ 14 or 11 or anything like that. Make sure you switch your C++ version to C++ 17. Specifically in Visual Studio, we can go over here into properties and then go into C++, C++ language, and then make sure that our language standard is actually set to C++ 17 standard. If it's set on default, it may not work. So for example, if I do switch it to default and I try and compile this code, you can see that it will not compile. We will get an error saying that name is an undeclared identifier. And in fact, we will get an error that tells us what we need to do. It says that language feature structured bindings requires compiler flag C++ 17. So to switch it to that, just make sure you go into your properties and set your C++ language standard to be C++ 17. Now, of course, if you're using a different IDE or a different build system than Visual Studio, like I am in this case, then you'll have to do the equivalent for that. But C++ 17 is what you need to have structured bindings, to use structured bindings like this. I wanna show you guys one more example. So what I've got here is some code from the OpenGL series, specifically the shader compilation code. I did talk about the possibility of using tuples in that video as well, which I might link in the top right corner. But basically what we ended up doing was we needed to parse a shader, which we took in a file path for, and then we just read that file. And the result of this function was splitting up that shader file into two different strings based on the shader type. And so what we did to support that is we returned a struct, as you can see, and if we look at what that struct is, we have a vertex source and a fragment source. So what I'm gonna do is change this to use structured bindings so that we don't need this struct at all. So I'll delete the struct, We'll come over here into our parse shader. We're not going to use a pair here, we'll use a tuple. The reason is that this theoretically could support more types than just fragment and vertex shaders, which is what we've got there right now. So what I'll do is just use a tuple again. You could use a pair, then later change it into tuple. It shouldn't break any code, but just giving a reason behind why I'm using tuple. Pair and tuple in this case, identical results. Okay, so we'll come over here and we'll also include that tuple. And now I will hop over into my C++ code. I will change this to be the same thing. The cool thing is that this return statement does not change at all because we still construct the tuple in exactly the same way. But if we come over here into where we actually use this code, which is up here, instead of using this shader program source type and then doing source.vertex source, source.fragment source, source, instead of that, we can now just use auto followed by vertex source and fragment source, and then just set that equal to parse shader. And then into the create shader function, this also disappears and just simply becomes a vertex source and fragment source. Now, in this case, you can see that this does not compile because we need to switch this to be C++ 17, which it currently is not. So let's just do that. Here it is language standard, and we'll set that to C++ 17. Now you can see the error goes away, and this is what we're left with. So really simple, really clean code. If we go back to our header file, you can see we got rid of that shader source struct altogether. We now have one less type floating around, which is a lot cleaner, a lot easier, because this is really the only case in our code where we actually want to use that shader source struct. If this was used all around our code base, maybe you wouldn't want to convert this into a tuple and use structured bindings like this. But in this case, it just makes so much sense. Why have a type that you only use once? That I don't really like the idea of that because it just clutters up your code base. You have an extra type floating around. Not necessary. You can just use structured bindings and tuples or pairs in this case. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you kind of benefited from seeing a real world example. If you did, you can drop a like below. You can also help support this channel by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. Huge thank you as always to all of the patrons that made this video possible. Drop a comment below on what you would like to see covered in C++ Next. I do have a very long list. I think there's like 20 items or so of what I'm gonna get through. I'm gonna try and put out a video for you as often as possible. So make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.